Now, we begin. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Dirty Mobs, and today I have a pretty exciting video to make, which is we're getting some quality of life changes slash buffs. Woo! Now, we're gonna go over them real quick. To start, our passive changes. Tentacle damage, we get an AP scaling of 0.4 added on top of what we already have. So just a straight addition to um, open up the amount of items we have access to. Now, to be a Debbie Downer, this does not mean we're gonna be going full AP allowing it's not happening that's more of a meme um it does open up some items that we would normally not use at all because we'd be wasting a lot of raw power but now we get a little bit of power right um the first one that came to my mind was being able to get zonya's hourglass maybe just for the ability to go stasis and get healed from your slams or buying it into say a trinomir or zed those are the two matchups that came to my mind right trinomir ult you just Zanya's half of it, and Zed ult being able to just completely negate it because that's usually a really hard matchup for me. Not even just one v one, but if it's a mid lane Zed, you can really just camp me in the side lane, and there's not really much you can do versus a really good Zed. So it's going to open up items to us. Um, one of the ones that a lot of people have been looking into is a Gunblade, which I think is more of a meme. You always want Death Sands pretty much. It's just more power. You get CDR. You get an anti-bleed, right? Gunblade, it does have AD and AP. It does have another passive, so you could sack Death Sands. Gunblade, Ravenous Hunter. Oh, gosh, yes. Spirit of Vestage, oh. Like, it's just, you're wasting so much gold on getting Death Sands and Gunblade. I mean, that's almost 7,000 gold for two items. And for something that, I mean, you can just Grievous Wounds and... If you're dying yourself, stun anyways, it doesn't really matter. So I, I think it's more of a meme. It's really hard to build too. Um, so you can try it. Go for the you know YouTube clickbait like healing builds. It's fine. Have fun with it. But as far as competitively, I don't think it's really going to be that viable. Remove tentacles. No longer go idle. All right. So the problem was with allowing is that most top laners you can play a mind game, right? You shove in top lane. You put a pink in the river so they don't have vision, and you go out of their vision so they don't know where you went, right? They make either bad pings towards their mid or jungle and alert them of things they shouldn't be aware of. They don't know if you're sitting in the bush and lane because your tentacle is still active no matter what. So it's just a nice quality of life change, right? We can actually play a little bit of mind games with them by going out of vision. New tentacles destroyed after 60 seconds down to 30 seconds. I think their intentions is to make Alawi more new user friendly. New users will typically mess up a tentacle placement, and the only way to get it to go away is to be away from it for 60 seconds or have it killed by the enemy. Now it'll be 30 seconds, so if they can just push in the wave and kind of stand away from it or pull the lane back and stand away from it, um, I think that's their intentions. For ex more experience Alawi, it's going to be pretty annoying having to reset your tentacles if you push up the wave for a while and you don't remember to walk back and make sure your tentacles don't despawn behind you. Um, or if you have to back and you don't have teleport, your tentacles are all going to die. So annoying, but I'm okay with it considering all the other changes we're going to get. Uh, tentacle additional vision range where they can be seen in Fog of War or Brush. 1400 down to 1000. I'd rather this be zero if they don't have vision in the bush. But what this means is if they're, you have a tentacle in Frog of War or Brush, they have to be within 1,000 vision range to see it. I mean, it's better than 1,400, so I'll take it. Um, the bug fix isn't really that big of a deal. Um, tentacle slam triggered before Live's death will now do damage. I don't know if that was ever a problem on Live. I thought that was more of a PvE problem. I recall my tentacles always deal damage after I die. Um, but maybe I'm misremembering. Anyways, they should do damage after you die. If you say W and your tentacles all slam after you die, they'll still do damage, which is good. New can now ping cooldown on passive. Woo! Finally. Now when I'm rotating to help my jungler and I'm like, hey buddy, would be a lot stronger if we had a tentacle here. I can ping it, you know, if it's five seconds away, I can be like, hey, ping it. Maybe we can kite it out for five more seconds. Just a nice quality of life change. Good. All right, moving on. Harsh Lesson W. 
Minimum damage, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. This is good, but I mean, for the most part, it really only matters on the rank 1W. So rank 1W, you're going to have about a 4.5% max health damage, and people are going to have low health pools. So basically, if a target has below 500 health, this 20 minimum damage is going to kick in. I think it's going to be helpful on like maybe early minions, maybe an early like Yumi. I don't know. It's nice. By the time we get to rank 2, 3, 4, 5, W, people are going to have enough health. You're going to have enough AD to where the minimum damage won't matter. But I'm not complaining. And new, your W damage now works on turrets. Now that's interesting. So it used to be we'd use Ws to reset cooldown, auto attack, animation, cooldown, um, and proc, triforce proc, or sheen proc. So what this means is, let's say you have like four and a half, five percent damage on W. Uh, first turret, tier one turret has like 5,000 health. So we're going to get, after armor, like 140 damage off of our W. So we're really going to be able to take turret platings a lot quicker. Especially if you go Trinity Force, you're going to be a turret taking machine. It's going to be nice. Definitely a buff. All right, Test of Spirit. This is where the exciting changes come in. Now, reduce, they removed the interaction where if you pull Spirit and they deal damage to you, you uh, the Spirit duration decreases by the interval shown. Um, I was against this change because I like the fact that the enemy, it's a mind game, right? I need to bait the enemy in to think they can contest me, and then I kill them with ult. Um, for the most part, there are some matchups that were just hard counters because of, because of this interaction. Uh, Rumble, Singe, Cassiopeia, Jax is pretty good. Mordeca new Mordekaiser passive. Now, these champions are going to be a lot more manageable. Not Cassiopeia, but the melees. They'll be a lot more manageable now because we can pull our spirit and not care if they're doing their little AoE damage around us. To make up for this, they did reduce the duration of spirit from 10 seconds to 7 seconds. I'm okay with this. Um, the enemy doesn't have a way to decrease it anymore, so it makes sense to reduce it by 3 seconds. as more than fair. Oh, now the vessel changes are really interesting. First off, they reduced the vessel duration from 12 seconds down to 10 seconds. This is fine because the vessel intensity is going to... They're going to feel it. If they lose the Nagake Boros, they will feel it. So the big interesting change is vessel time between slams. So the internal cooldown on tentacles on a vessel target from 10 seconds at all levels to 5, 4, and 5. Three seconds at levels 1, 7, and 13. Wow. All right. So I play Alawi. My goal is to hit level 6 as quick as possible and not really interact too much. Now, we can interact more early on. I still think you want to prioritize weight position so that because it's mainly about avoiding jungle ganks. But the level 7, 4 seconds. Whew. So what, what you do is on Alawi, you... Push in with your wave clear, playing around your tentacles. You push in the wave quickly. When the enemy goes for CS, you throw your E at them. They now have to decide, do they want CS or do they want to eat the E? Sometimes you start hitting E after E after E. And they start getting three to four tentacles around them. Um, they're trying to go for CS. They're trying to deal with these tentacles and dodge your E. It's not fun. Now that was bad when it was a 10 second internal cooldown. It's going to be four seconds. If they're not killing every tentacle as they come up, they're not playing the game. Like, you're going to get so many more kills. You're going to get bigger CS leads. It's going to be impactful. It's going to be chaos, and I love it. Oh, it's going to be great. Um, it also changes the dynamic of the 1v1. So it used to be, all right, you landed your E. Their priority was to damage you and get that, that spirit out of here. Now, what Riot wants is to switch to the focus of the 1v1 away from the spirit and more on tentacles, right? That's why they increased tentacle power um, instead of making this, like, hit allow you to reduce this, the time on the spirit. So that's a focus, and I, I'm okay with this change. I think it's going to be healthy. I think it's going to bring a lot more in line with other champions because we've been incredibly weak for a long time, contrary to what I don't know, TF Blade would say. Um, now, last one is Leap of Faith. Maximum summons from 5 to 6. 
I believe it used to be a technical problem where the spacing on the tentacles would create a pentagon, um, so you couldn't get six. It was a spacing issue. They recently changed that, I believe, so you can get a hexagon. You get six tentacles to spawn. So to compensate for this, they increased the maximum summons from five to six. I think it was actually because of this. And so that means if you land an E and an ult on all six, you get six tentacles. All right. More hentai. Woo. And the last change is tentacles spawned by Leap of Faith will now be more generous and persisting if triggered by Harsh Lesson at the very end of the ult duration. I can't tell you how many times I have died and lost kills because I W to target and their spirit and tentacle went to slam. Nope. Despawned. Sorry. It's the biggest Debbie Downer in the world. I'm very happy that they're being more lenient on that. I think it makes sense. So, overall, what do I think? Great. These are buffs. Um, hopefully, they're not too strong. I might get banned a little more often. But I think this is bringing us more in line with other champions where um, we don't have mobility, right? We're reliant on, on being a combo deck, basically. We set up our, our situation with passive tentacles to set those up. We land the E, and we're ready to, to deal damage. Now we can really do that and have a big impact when we do. So I think it brings a lot more in line with everyone else. Now, if you'd like to see more Alawi com content, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Um, in the very near future, hopefully before this patch even drops this coming week, I hope to be turning the ultimate matchup guide written guide that I created, which you can find the link down below. I hope to be turning that into a full-blown video guide, which should be better at explaining my strategy, why I pick items, why I pick runes, um, all the, that jazz. And I think it'll be a big help if you want to learn Alawi and become better. So I'll see you tomorrow.